In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to import SVG files into Cricut Design Space. This process applies to SVG files from Dreaming Tree or 3dsvg.com as well as files from svgcuts.com. If your files are not yet extracted, be sure to watch the unzip extract video prior to following this tutorial. Now for the sake of this demonstration, I have three different projects on my desktop already unzipped. I'm using a Mac running OS X, but this process is pretty much the same for anyone running a PC. So let's take a look at Stingy Jack's Lantern 2. We're going to open that folder, and in that folder you'll see that there's a PDF menu, and if you double click on that it will launch Adobe Reader. Now this document contains a supply list, a photo, as well as a legend that shows you what each piece is and what the name of that file is as well as the dimensions, which for Cricut Design Space users, this information is not really necessary because Cricut Design Space will open the files at their native size. If you'd like, you can print this out and put it in a binder or actually upload it to your iPad and use it as a reference. In addition to the menu, there's a high resolution photo of the completed project, as well as a folder that contains all the necessary SVG files to create the project, and in some cases, depending on the project, we do include an additional folder that contains some printable elements. Inside this folder, the vellum folder, there is a PDF file that you can print out on vellum that gives you this cool gradient effect. Now if you don't want to print this out on transparent vellum, you can actually use the vellum cut SVG file and cut any color vellum that you'd like, or if you just want to use the standard white transparent vellum, you can import this file and have your machine cut the vellum. So let's jump into Cricut Design Space. Now to begin importing or uploading the files to create this project, we need to click Upload Images. And anytime you're working with an SVG file, as you can see here, it says to upload and use your SVG files, you want to use Upload Vector or the Vector Upload feature. So we're going to click this button. We're going to hit Browse. And on the desktop, that's where I have my files right now, yours may be in a different location, you want to browse to the folder that contains the files for the Lantern or whatever project you want to create. We're going to open up that folder, and then we need to go into the SVG Files folder, and we're going to select the first SVG and click Open. Okay, so there you can see it there. The name is already provided. You can tag it if you'd like, and we're going to hit Save. Now you'll want to repeat this process as many times necessary until you have all of these SVG files imported. So now I'm going to select frame 2 and hit open, and then hit save, and I'm going to hit upload vector again, click browse, and do hanger underscore black and open that, and hit save, and again upload vector, browse, Panels 1, open, and hit save, and upload vector again for the last time for this specific project. Select the SVG and hit open. Now you may have to go through this process more times or less times depending on the number of SVG files included for that specific project. In this case we had 5 or 6, I believe. It was actually 5. So now that they're uploaded, in order to get them onto the mat and ready for cutting, you want to click and select them in this little area here under the Uploaded Images Library section. I'm going to go ahead and import all five at the same time. And you can see that I have them selected because they're checked. And I'm going to click Insert Images. Now just so you can see this a lot better, I'm going to go ahead and hide a few of these. Actually, I'm going to hide all of them but one. And if you take a look at the layers here, you'll notice that two of them have, or two of the SVG files have multiple layers. Okay, and what that is, is actually a score layer. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up so you can see what I mean. Now this file here has some score lines. Okay, now, now you don't want to set these to score. Okay, you do have the option to set them to score, but we prefer that you cut them. The Cricut Score tool does not do a very accurate job when it comes to scoring these lines. 
Okay, these lines do need to be cut so that you can get a very accurate fold. So we do not recommend scoring. These are very precise, perforated score lines that do need to be cut. Now the most important thing to remember when cutting a file that has multiple layers where one of the layers is a score line is that you need to attach the file before you cut it. Now let me show you why you need to do that. If we don't attach it and we hit go, what's going to happen is the score lines are going to be placed on a separate mat. And if you feed the same mat in twice, you'll notice that these score lines will not actually cut in the correct location. They're going to actually mangle your project. So what you need to do is you need to attach the file prior to cutting. And you can accomplish that by highlighting the file. You can either click on it here or you can click on it here to select it. Okay, we have it selected here and we just click attach. Okay, and you'll notice that it says attached set. And now when we hit go, instead of it placing the score lines and the actual cut information on separate mats, it puts it all together so it all cuts in one fell swoop. So now that you know how to attach, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off temporarily and turn on the other one. Okay, and I'm going to highlight it here and I'm going to click attach on that as well. And now they're both attached. Now remember, you only need to attach the ones that have multiple layers where one of the layers is a scoring layer. And you can tell it's a scoring layer because if you hide the layer, the score lines disappear. So that one's attached, this one's attached. I'm going to turn this back on, turn this back on, and turn this back on. And it looks like a mess, but when you click Go, Design Space automatically figures out how many mats are required to cut this project. And as you can see, this SVG file, including the score lines, are going to be on one mat. This one's going to be on another mat, another mat, and so on and so forth. So all you have to do at this point is just hit go, feed the paper in, and you're ready to cut. Now once you have all your pieces cut out, you can visit 3dsvg.com, bring up the product page for this item, and watch the assembly tutorial.